Hello, good day everyone. I am Anne-Marie Rojas and I am assigned with the topic, the Renewable Energy Act. And so today, I will just be giving you an overview of this act. Republic Act 9513, also known as the Renewable Energy Act of 2008. So this is an act promoting the development, utilization, and commercialization of renewable energy resources and for other purposes. As we all know, the energy sector is the leading emitter of greenhouse gases in the Philippines. In 2000, there is a leap of 39% from 1994 emission record of CO2 gigagrams on this sector. Emissions mostly come from the combustion of imported fuels and other activities related to the production of energy, such as coal mining, oil and gas exploration, production, and processing. And so, RA9513 or the Renewable Energy Act of 2008 was codified in December 2008 to affirm the government's commitment to accelerate the utilization of RE resources in the country. So this is to effectively reduce harmful emissions and achieve economic development while protecting health and environment. So renewable energy is an essential part of the country's low emission development strategy and is vital to addressing challenges of climate change, energy security, and access to energy. And it is one of the most talked about solutions to global warming. This act implemented in our country is created to help us transition from power industry to a cleaner and more sustainable future. Renewable energy have been continuously blooming in every country from large power plant installation to small scale systems in household. So now let's review what is renewable energy. It is the energy from sources that are continually replenished by nature such as the sun, the wind, the water, the earth's heat, plants, and even animals. And renewable technologies turn these resources into usable forms of energy, most often electricity, but also heat, chemicals, or mechanical power. Renewable energy sources is commonly categorized as a cleaner, non-polluting, and a more sustainable source of energy. So there are different types of renewable energy sources. So we have biomass, geothermal, solar, hydro, ocean, and wind. For biomass energy system, this refers to energy system that uses biomass resources like sugarcane, coconut husks and shells, rice hull, animal and other agri-waste to produce steam, mechanical power, or electricity through either thermochemical, biochemical, or physiochemical processes, or through such other technologies. For geothermal energy system, this refers to systems that convert geothermal energy, so which is energy that can be extracted from the heat in the earth into useful power. In this system, cool water is injected to the ground and then hot water is pumped up and heat is used to produce steam which is used to turn turbines of generators, thus producing electricity. For solar energy system, this refers to systems which convert solar energy into thermal or electrical energy. This can be classified as ground-mounted solar, rooftop solar, or floating solar, among others. Hydroelectric power systems, this refer to water-based energy systems which produce electricity by utilizing the kinetic energy of falling or running water to turn a turbine generator. The ocean energy system refers to the energy system which convert ocean or tidal current, ocean thermal gradient or wave energy into electrical or mechanical energy. Lastly, the wind energy system. This refers to machines or other related equipment that convert wind energy into electrical or mechanical energy. So now talking about the development of renewable energy in the Philippines. So, renewable energy has long been part of the energy industry, and so the enactment of the RA9513 has reinforced the development of RE in the country. So, within the RE law, the following policies of the state are put in place. Number one, accelerate the exploration and development of renewable energy resources in order to achieve energy self-reliance 
so that we can reduce the country's dependence on fossil fuels and minimize the country's exposure to price fluctuations. So, yun yung mga different types of RE resources as I mentioned earlier. So, this policy encourages our country to transition from power industry to a cleaner and sustainable resources. And number two, to effectively prevent or reduce harmful emissions and thereby balance the goals of economic growth and development with the protection of health and environment. So the country can grow and develop and yet still putting the health and safety of the people as well as for the next generations. And number three, to increase the utilization of renewable energy by providing fiscal and non-fiscal incentives. So, incentives and privileges were stipulated for renewable energy development initiatives. It's provided to renewable energy projects and programs, hybrid and co-generation system, um, renewable energy commercialization, and farmers engaged in plantation of biomass resources. And to avail these incentives and privileges, it is encouraged that parties be registered and accredited by Department of Energy and board of investments so the renewable energy developers and local manufacturers fabricators as well as um, suppliers of locally produced renewable energy equipment shall register with the doe or the department of energy through the remb or the renewable energy management bureau for them to be able to secure certification that serve as basis to incentives provided in this act and now for the regulatory framework of this act, um, the Department of Energy or the DOE is mandated to lead the implementation of the act. And as the lead agency, DOE is mandated among others to perform necessary actions for the execution of the enumerated RE policy mechanisms and formulate and implement National Energy Program or NREP. Also embodied in the Act are the creations of National Renewable Energy Board or the NREB and the Renewable Energy Management Bureau or the REMB. So the National Renewable Energy Board or the NREB is the one who acts as a collegial body tasked to recommend policies to DOE and monitor the implementation of the Act. In addition, the Board recommends specific actions to support the activities of DOE especially the National Renewable Energy Program or the NREP. So the National Renewable Energy Board or the NREB is composed of a chairman and one representative each from the following agencies. One from DOE, um, from DTI, from Department of Finance, from DENR, from National Power Corporation, from National Transmission Corporation or its successors in interest, one from Finan Philippine National Oil Company and Philippine Electricity Market Corporation and who shall be designated by their secretaries on a permanent basis and one representative each from the RE developers, government financial institutions, private distribution utilities, electric cooperative, electricity suppliers, and non-governmental organizations duly endorsed by their respective industry associations and all to be appointed by the President of the Republic of the Philippines. On the other hand, the Renewable Energy Management Bureau or the REMB is on the forefront of effective implementation of the provisions of the Act. So as such, the Bureau developed and formulated National Renewable Energy Program to accelerate the development, utilization and commercialization of renewable energy resources and technologies among others. So now let's talk about some of the incentives under the RE law. So because there are so many incentives, so I will share with you some of it. So number one is the fiscal incentives. Um, these are tax related incentives, exemption from universal charge on some systems and cash incentives among others. So for all the entities involved in the RE development, their incentives include tax exemption of importation of inputs, components, parts, and materials. So these are duty-free importations and income tax holidays. So for the first seven years of its commercial op 
operations, the duly registered um, renewable energy developer shall be exempt from income taxes levied by the national government and also sa financial assistance programs. Second is the non-fiscal incentives, which includes feed-in tariff, net metering program, renewable portfolio standards, and green energy option program. For feed-in tariff, um, this is a non-fiscal incentive which sets a fixed price for the sale or purchase of one unit of renewable electricity. So the cost of this feed-in tariff scheme were covered by end users through a surcharge on retail prices. But this was um, discontinued and instead switched to reverse auctions for the goal to ensure better support for large-scale um, solar projects which this strategy resulted in more competitive costs of solar and wind generation at a grid parity level. For net metering, um, this program allows any user with an on-site renewable energy facility not larger than 100 kilowatt to feed excess power back to the grid and be credited. So these credits can then be used by the customers to offset power they purchase from the utility at a future time when they consume more than they can generate. So they receive credits that can be used for offsetting um, electricity bills. Renewable portfolio standards. Um, these incentives which require certain energy participants like distribution utilities, retail electricity suppliers, and even some generating companies to source an agreed portion of their energy supply from eligible renewable energy facilities. So this market-based policy aims to help increase renewable energy utilization of about 35% in the generation mix by 2030. So all stakeholders in the electric power industry shall contribute to the growth of the renewable energy in the country. Lastly, the Green Energy Option Program, um, incentive which shall allow end users of a certain demand to secure contract and source their supply directly with a renewable energy supplier. So this provides the end users the option to choose renewable energy resources as their source of energy. So there is also the Renewable Energy Trust Fund and the Renewable Energy Trust Fund is hereby established to enhance the development and greater utilization of renewable energy. And it shall be administered by the DOE as a special account in any of the government financial institutions. And also, there are financial assistance programs as well from these um, government financial institutions such as the um, Development Bank of the Philippines and the Land Bank of the Philippines. So now let's talk about the National Renewable Energy Program or the NREP which was developed and formulated by the Renewable Energy Management Bureau. Um, so this was launched on 2011 and it outlines the policy framework enshrined in the RA9513. So it sets the strategic building blocks that will help the country achieve the goals set forth in the Renewable Energy Act. So it indicated interim targets for the delivery of energy sources within the time frame of 2011 and 2030. In principle, it provided the basis for national and local renewable energy planning that will identify specific actions and period upon which outcomes will be generated. And so, this is the ambitious plan we adopted, aiming at 15.3 gigawatt renewable power capacity by 2030 and over 20 gigawatt by 2040. So to achieve this, uh, the National Renewable Energy Program intends to um, increase geothermal capacity by 75%. So the target of that would be on 2027 and um, increase hydropower capacity by 160% and the target is uh, 2023 and deliver additional 277 megawatt biomass power capacity. This was achieved in 2015 and add additional 2,345 megawatt wind power capacity and the target would be next year, um, 2022 and develop ocean energy facility as well and the target is at 2025 so you can see in this uh, in the table the roadmap 
And so, with the continuous implementation of the RE law and its programs, it's hoped to further increase the share of RE in the Philippines and achieve this target by 2020, 2030 or even earlier. And so I looked up to the website of the DOE and found some renewable energy projects awarded as of May 2021. So there are a lot of projects listed but I only get the projects that are located here in Mindanao. So here's what I found. So for the biomass project, um, this is for own use. Um, we have um, Bosco Sugar Milling Company Incorporated. So this is located in Quezon, Bukidnon. For geothermal projects, um, we have um, Energy Development Corporation, uh, E-Oil and Gas Company Incorporated. These are pre-development stage and also the Energy Development Corporation. Um, located in Compostela Valley, South Cotabato, and North Cotabato or Davao del Sur respectively. And we also have Energy Development Corporation which is a um, commercial operation and this is located in Kidapawan City or North Cotabato. So in the hydropower projects, we have a lot. We already have a lot of hydropower projects here in Mindanao. So I can see there's a lot in Zambonga del Sur, in the Zambonga del Norte. We have here in Misamis Oriental, um, located in Claveria, we have one that is already in operation stage and commercial operation stage. And also one in its pre-development stage. And we also have in Hingog City, we have five um, that is under pre-development stage and we have in Bukidnon so you can see this in the website of the DOE and also in we have a lot in hydropower and for ocean project we have one in Surigao del Norte which is on its um, pre-development stage so the Adnama Power Resources Corporation. And so for the wind projects, we have three um, in Mindanao. Um, all are in their pre-development stage. So we have from Surigao del Norte and Agusan del Norte. And lastly, for the solar projects, which is for own use, um, I have seen three. We have here um, in Misamis Oriental 2, in Cagayan de Oro City, and one in North Catabato. So in Cagayan de Oro City, we have the Maria Reina Xavier University Hospital in Inc. And the Solar Thermal Technologies in Agri-Food Applications, um, Carbon Dioxide Processing Inc. And the Light Beam Solar pro Power Project. So these are what I've seen in the DOE awarded projects by as of May 2020, so you can look up in the DOE website if you like to see. And so that is the current status of the renewable energy in the Philippines. And um, again, the purpose of this act is to effectively reduce harmful emissions and achieve economic development while protecting health and environment. And so I'd like to end by leaving you this quote from Mahatma Gandhi that says, there is sufficiency in the world for man's need, but not for man's greed. And so that's all, and thank you, and may God bless us all.